When I think I was about 12 years old, my mom must have spotted some potential and sent me to drawing classes, um, which I attended. Uh, and it was the classic still life setup, you know, yeah. the jug, uh, bottle, glasses, those usual things. And I very delicately carved my way around. I got the shine, I got the shape, I, I got everything. I, I was rather pleased with what I did, actually. I thought it was probably one of my best still lives to date. Um, and the teacher came along with a big, heavy pencil and started showing me what I should have done and actually destroyed my drawing. I, I thought it was better than his. <laughs> so... That's it? And, I think it was a formal... Yeah, I think it was right at that point that I decided it's not right for me. And it's not to say that it's not right for other artists, other painters, but I felt that for me, I had got to carve my own path. All right, now, I've seen many of your paintings over the years, and bowls and jugs, uh, but the bowls particularly were a kind of a trademark thing. What is it about bowls and jugs? I have no more interest in bowls or jugs than anybody else, I don't think. I think it's my vocabulary. You know, it's the shape that I make. Um, I don't think my paintings are necessarily about that. But I think in terms of the making of a painting um, and the marks that you use becomes your vocabulary. Um, and that happens to be mine. Um, I don't think it matters what it is. I think how the painting affects you is the important thing and how you relate to it. Um, I think you can have a painting of anything that can be very special if it's a great painting. I'm, I'm looking at the two paintings we have here, and you were actually a bit reluctant to bring them into this studio environment. Uh, why? Well, I guess it's, it's minimal painting. It's modern painting. I think their natural environment is a gallery or a museum or a beautiful white wall. Um, Maybe just for that reason, if you take something out of its natural environment, you know, you're threading very close to the line, I think, uh, when you're doing minimal paintings that almost go back to primitive marks or childhood or childish marks. We're looking at the, the exhibition in the gallery, and I see what you mean. When you give them the space to breathe against uh, the white walls, uh, they have a completely different impact than, I suppose, even in the claustrophobic uh, area of your own studio. You know, you have them at home, you take That's them out. That's absolutely correct. You know, I work in a very small studio. Some of these paintings are pretty big. Um, they're s totally surrounded by clutter. And I just kind of thought, when I get rid of these into the environment that they should be in, I don't want to see them surrounded by clutter again. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of clutter in this particular <laughs> room here. Now, the, the things that you do, when I, when I look at the paintings and, you know, go up close, first of all, there's a lot of Cyrillic writing on the paintings. Where does that come from, the Russian alphabet? Why? I think most of the things in the foreground of my work in some way come from childhood. I'm not really one for analysing um, or over-analysing things, but it goes back to this. Th I mean, the jug, for instance, you know, these big water jugs I remember seeing as a child in a great aunt's house or something. They struck me as the most ugly things I had ever seen. Um, they weren't in any way designed to be beautiful, to be, They were you know, utterly functional. Utterly functional. And for that reason, um, I think I hated them. They were the most awkward things. But slowly then, many years passed, I was, I think I had just got married. We were in some market and I came across one and I just said, wow. And it took me back to my childhood. And in a weird way, I thought it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. So what I tried to do in these paintings is perhaps exaggerate the awkwardness. And what I tried to do is get across how they affected me from childhood. Um, and that's how I express my feelings. And then the Russian, where does that come from? Very similar thing. I remember you would see maybe clips of behind, behind the Iron Curtain when you were a kid. And you'd see these big, bland, gray buildings always a cement finish with this writing that looked, it was so powerful, but so foreign and so scary. And it had a strange effect on me. And as I grew older and came across it, I thought it was 
beautiful and, and the power of it became important to me. Looking I think that's where uh, so many things come from. In the foreground, I think the background of my work perhaps is more painterly and more yeah. what I have developed over the years in my gift. Now, you have allowed um, some of the marks that, you know, an artist would say, I don't like that, I'll, I'll draw that again. So they obliterate it, maybe just another whitewash over it and start again. You don't. You kind of leave your tentative beginnings. Yeah, Still, what I tend do to do is I put a very thin whitewash over it because I don't make a mark in the foreground of a painting unless I think it's necessary. If it's necessary, I put it down. But then I realise that perhaps I wasn't right, but I must have been in some way right, so leave the mistakes and allow that to be part of the finished result. Are, are you nervous when you launch an exhibition like this? A, a lot of work, of course. years of work maybe, yeah, certainly yeah. many, many months of work. Especially in the economic climate, I guess, one is nervous because a painter has bills to pay like anybody. Yeah. But then you put them out there. I mean, you're terrified that some critic will come along uh, and just decide that, you know, it's rubbish. No, that doesn't frighten me. Um, I was in a punk band when I was a kid. You tend <laughs> to come, become pretty thick-skinned. Uh, no, I don't mind flack. It, 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 it's a thing that's never bothered me. I've got to believe in the painting. And if I believe in the painting, and if I have been totally truthful in working the canvas, or in this case, the wood, um, well, then I can stand okay. by it. And, and the opposite, if you get an endorsement, like one of your paintings has been bought by Emma, um, does that give you a, a kick? Or do you treat the, uh, the, the two impostors equally, the criticism or the praise? No, I mean, I'd be lying if I said that it didn't make me happy. I mean, I think any painter, you know, that has dug very deep over a period of... The last 25 years, I've dedicated my working life to painting. I dedicated my thinking to painting since I was a child. It's the only thing I have ever been. So I think if a great museum, and Emma being exactly that, come along and appreciate what you have done and accept that the end result is worth having in their permanent collection. Um, you want people who are passionate about art to see your work and to judge your work, as opposed to people that don't really care about art. And you have got the endorsement, of course, of the, the, the greatest Irish abstract painter of his generation, Sean Scully, who's written the forward to your, to your catalogue. Googie, it's a pleasure. I'm glad you had the bottle to bring them in here. Thank you very much for joining us in the day. Oh, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, uh, that exhibition is on in Dublin's Curlin Gallery and runs until the 25th of April.